Hello and welcome back to Custo Central. In this episode we're going to have a look at how tough are Talamons actually in the game. So the first thing to note is with the release of the new Death Guard Codex people have been kind of complaining about how hard it is to kill Mortarian. Um, now Mortarian is an 18 win model, his toughness 8, he has a 3 up save, 4 up invul and a 5 up feel no pain with minus 1 damage reduction. Um, it's, it's simpler for purposes moving forward to calculate the damage reduction now and then ignore the feel no pain. And when you do that, this basically means you need to do 27 wounds to the model um, and then ignoring his feel no pain um, going forwards. And Mortarian is 490 points plus whatever CP you spend for kind of warlord traits. Now the Telamon is also a toughness 8 model. He has 14 wounds, a 2 up save, 4 up invul, and a 6 up feel no pain with minus 1 damage reduction. And you note this is very similar to um, Mortarian's profile. He's, he has a different kind of feel no pain um, and save, um, but the, otherwise they're pretty similar, other than Mortarian has um, a few more wounds. Now, when you simplify the Telamon's feel no pain, this only equates to a 16.8 wounds um, because you're, you have a 6 up feel no pain instead of a 5 up feel no pain, which is actually uh, very significant. But a Telamon is much, much cheaper. Um, than Mortarian is, and you're looking at kind of 260, 275 points for a gun and fist loadout. Now, if we think about the kind of guns that are prevalent in a game for anti-tank that will be shooting at Talamond or Mortarian, um, the gun that kind of springs to mind are kind of multi-melters. And these are D6 weapons, um, and because they're D6 weapons, with the minus one damage reduction, your average wounds is going to be 2.66. Um, it would be 3.5 minus one, but your one damage roll can't be reduced to zero, so that's why your average damage isn't 2.5, it's actually 2.66. And working back from the effectively the wounds ignoring feel no pain is how I'd like to do this calculation. So if we need to do 16.8 wounds to a Telamon and we have a four up invul save um, and we're doing 2.66 wounds on average per, per unfailed save, it means we need 6.3 failed armor saves and Strength 8 versus Toughness 8 means we need to double that in terms of wounds. And if we need this in terms of wounds, this is how many, um, how many hits that we need because we're going to convert half the, half the hits into wounds. And so this is basically how this calculation works. You just work backwards from your, um, your net wounds excluding feel no pain and you work up to how many hits you need. And I think people will know inherently that Telemons are very kind of tanky and survivable. But I think they'll be surprised that um, that you, you're effectively going to need 38 shots at Ballistic Skill 3, assuming no modifiers. Um, shooting at a Telamon outside of bonus damage range with a Melter Gun to kind of kill it on average. Um, so obviously this will this will change on variants, you know, on dice rolls, etc. But that's the average without any buffs um, on the Telamon or for the kind of shooting player. And... When I when I worked this out, I was kind of surprised at how high that number was because I, I knew it was going to be a high number, uh, but I didn't think it would be this high. Now, if we compare this to Mortarian, remember he's got 27 wounds excluding feel no pain, um, and he's going to need 10.2 failed armor saves, um, which is 20-ish wounds, which means 60-ish hits, 40-ish hits, which means about 60-ish shots at Ballistic Skill 3. Um, so you can see here that on, on this comparison, Mortarian is is about 50% more survivable than a Telamon. That's fine because Mortarian is about 50% more expensive than a Telamon. Now, what happens when we look at uh, D6 plus 2? And this is effectively kind of heavy melter rifles outside of the, the half range. And it's multi-melters and, and melter weapons inside half range. Um, I think some of, the, some of the kind of fusion and melter guns in the game... Uh, some of them are still running the old rules where you can reroll the dice, but I think the majority now are at D6 plus 2. And this will change your average damage on an unsaved uh, armor save to 4.66. And when we do that, we see Mortarian kind of pulling out more ahead, because obviously having more wounds is, is more beneficial. Um, so he ends up slightly better than 50% more survival than, than a Talman. And it's the same sort of calculations here. Again, you don't need to kind of go through it all but the headline figures are you know you now need only about 22 shots at ballistic skill 3 and 35 um, at ballistic skill 3 to kill Mortarian and Atalamon. Um, if we go up to 
bonus damage with a heavy melter rifle. We're now in D6 plus 4 territory, and that's going to average 6.6 .6 wounds. And at this stage, a Telamon stops being quite so survivable, where you only need kind of 10 hits. Um, so you have to realize that heavy melter rifles and eradicator squads are actually now extremely dangerous to Telamons. Um, and here again, Mortarion pulls out massively um, compared to a Telamon because Mortarion just has way more wounds that you need to get through. So you have to realize that in a Custodes army, um, you're quite likely to have a Vex Magnifica for the minus one to hit, and this is going to be pretty similar to Miasma and Mortarion to give uh, a minus one to hit. And all that does really is, you know, you just adjust the ballistic skill needed for the number of shots needed um, to convert them to the number of hits needed. Now, the cool thing about a Telamon is that if you take it in a Shadow Keeper's detachment, um, and I think this should be usually your, your default detachment or your default kind of shield host, the minus one strength actually significantly changes the, the efficiency of the model um, because now strength eight uh, shots are wounding on five up instead of four up. And so that's a 33% reduction in wounds. Or the other way to look at it is you need 50% additional hits um, compared to what you had before to get the same amount of kind of uh, wounds through to force the armor saves. Um, and in that relation, you know, Emperor's Auspice is a 2CP strat to turn off rerolls on your model on a Custodes unit. And this is pretty similar to Mortarion apart from there's no range cap on it. Um, I think for Mortarion it's, it's a it's a bubble aura where you can't reroll, um, but that has a limited range. So what now happens if we compare kind of strength eight guns with D6 damage, and we're assuming no kind of no bonus damage, no buffs, but now we are now buffing the Telamon with Grim Responsibility. And once we do that, um, we push the strength of the weapon down to strength seven, um, which will increase the number of wounds needed. And on this comparison now, you're looking at 56.7 shots at Ballistic Skill 3 versus 60.9 for Mortarion. And that's kind of close enough for me to say that they're effectively equivalent within the game. And you have to realize that Mortarion is way more expensive than a Telamon is. Obviously, Mortarion has much higher kind of expected output, if it, especially if it gets into melee than a Telamon. Um, but in terms of survivability, it's very, very close. Um, so a lot of people won't have played against Mortarion yet, so I thought it would be useful to compare a Telamon versus another model which they probably will have been more familiar with, and that is a Questorus Knight. Now, Questorus Knight has 24 wounds, it's got no field of pain, it's got no damage reduction, and we're going to assume that your opponent is always going to be rotating Iron Shield, so it will have a 4-up pinball save. Now, if you shoot this with a Melter Gun um, and you're not in bonus range, you are now going to average 3.5 damage per unsaved wound on D6. Don't have to worry about damage reduction or anything like that. And that means you need 6.9 failed armor saves. Um, and you'll notice this is very similar, actually, to what a Talamon needs in terms of armor saves. But you're going to need much more hits um, compared to the Grim Resolved one um, because you get a 50% conversion here and you get a 33% conversion here because you know they're winning on fives here, they're winning on fours here. And what this means is that you're only going to need 41 shots, 41 melter shots um, at Ballistic Skill 3 versus 56 um, to kill a Telamon. And when you when you look at it in, in, in that way, you realize if you're only shooting kind of Telamons with kind of melter guns outside of bonus damage range, or maybe you're trying to shoot them with kind of last cannons or something, um, they're very, very comparable in, in terms of their durability. Now, obviously, this uh, this won't apply to damage one and kind of higher damage weapons, you know, where you get to, to flat five, six, or higher kind of damage weapons where having more wounds would just be better. Um, but I think this is kind of... I don't know if it's surprising to some of you, but this should this should give you a frame of reference for exactly how tanky a Telamon is um, to kill. So... In real games, how does this translate? So, yeah, so Mortarion will, will usually be denying rerolls and aura. Uh, the Telamon doesn't have a distance gap on it. He will usually be using Wyasma on himself, and the Telamon would usually be in an army that is carrying a Vex Magnifica, but not always. Um, and we've been looking at averages so far, but we haven't been looking at kind of the effective command rerolls because you 
you may or may not be using Emperor's Auspice to turn off rerolls um, when opponents target your turn one to kill. And the reason why that matters is the effect of the command reroll. So if they roll poorly on their damage roll, um, let's say they roll a one or a two, they're very, very likely to, to reroll that. And that will change the kind of average number of shots because now once once they um, get an unsafe win through, they're much more likely to, to get a higher damage on it than, than the average. Uh, so yeah, so a Shadow Keeper Salamon's very similar um, to Mortarian in terms of durability and is much cheaper. And it's also very similar to a Questorus Knight. Um, now a Knight will do much better, yeah, against damage one or a higher damage weapon just because it's got a higher number of wounds. So then we have to think, how does how does a Talamon usually die in the game? Um, and it depends on your opponent faction, but it's typically kind of one of these general categories. Um, so the first one is Mortal Wounds, because when they're doing Mortal Wounds, they're effectively bypassing, you know, usually they're bypassing your toughness and they're bypassing your save. And this is a huge part of where well, you mitigate the damage coming in, um, because usually they're wounding on fours or fives and you're saving on fours minimum. Um, which will give you like a, which will give them effectively like a 20 25 percent conversion or or worse um, and they bypass all of that when they're doing uh, kind of mortal wounds um, the other reason you might die is you know your opponent gets some lucky rolls or you get some unlucky rolls so you know you just roll way under average for your saves for example or they roll way higher and then average for their um, for their wounds roll etc or i find this actually works quite well is weight of dice at ap1 or ap2 um most most lists can can take a surprising amount of kind of just ap1 ap2 guns um even if they're not really geared towards killing high toughness units because you know they're winning on on fives or sixes but they tend to have a large number of shots um and when you just need to to, to save that many shots you know you will start taking a lot of significant chip damage on telemons um strength 10 weapons that just completely ignores your grim responsibility value because whether it's strength 10 or strength 9 they're still winning you on threes so now you don't get that benefit um although you know it's still a very durable unit versus strength 10 it's not it's not as good as it would be versus strength 8 for example if your opponent army has kind of plus one to wound mechanics um or a wounding mechanic that ignores toughness 8 you know kind of in the same way that mortal wounds do that could be a, a reason why telemon dies or they've got something to ignore involved saves or reduces your involved save. So something like, I don't know, Jinx, for example. Or sometimes Space Marines take Relics to, to reduce your involved save. So what are some noteworthy kind of scary units or combos in armies? Um, so Necrons, they have a few. Doomstalkers are strength 10, D6. Doomsday Arcs are strength 10, D6. Silent King is strength 10 and flat 6. Um, although he only has two of those shots until the, the minions die. Uh, the Locust Heavy Destroyers are again strength 10 and 3d3 damage. It's pretty swingy, um, but you're you're looking at kind of average 6, and then you reduce that down to 5, and obviously five, flat 5 damage is, is still pretty scary to a Telamon. Nightbringer is obviously very scary. Um, he's doing a ton of mortal wounds, and um, if he gets into combat, your Telamon's probably dead most times, and the Void Dragon, obviously, you, know, you want to stay away from them. Now... Like a special kind of shout out I want to do is to the auto wound strat. So if you have a blob of 20 warriors um, with the gorse reapers, so these are the strength, uh, I think they're strength five minus two. Um, and if they pop the strat where they auto wound you on sixes to hit and they're within Silent King Aura, so they can reroll everything, not just misses. Um, this will actually do a surprising amount of automatic wounds onto your Telamon. Um, you'll be saving them on fours and taking six off feel no pains, but um, that will be that will be a lot of automatic wounds onto you already. Space Marines, I think Salamanders are by far the kind of scariest um, for Telamons because they get plus one to wound with Flamer and Melter. Um, even Flamers like Aggressors, when when they're when they're plus one to wound um, and they're auto hitting and they can use you know strats for max shots. Um, this can this can wear a Telemon down as well. Uh, generally, you know, Melter within half range is scary. Heavy Melter rifles are always scary, and they're extremely scary if they get within half range. Kind of large units with plus one to wound through, I don't know, maybe psychic powers or chaplain auras or you know relic buffs or special rules etc. 
um, if they have or just have a, a ton of attacks winning on at least five up um, with at least AP one. So it, it's again in the same way that you know you, you start taking the chip damage, and if you have to roll, you know, a lot of saves, you are slowly going to start taking wounds. And things like smite, thunder hammers um, are pretty scary because you know the the units that can take them they they tend to be pretty large and they can take a large um a number of models in a unit that can take them so if you get if you get charged by seven or eight thunder hammer vanguard vets for example and they have a chaplain that's given them you know plus strength or you know plus wound or something like that that can actually be pretty scary sisters of battle retributors um within half range are scary and multi melters in general from sisters are scary because they have miracle dice so that means effectively every single time that they get an unsafe wound through they just you know they just use their their five or their six um for the dice for the wound roll um and that will kill you telemon much faster than you would ordinarily think um astra Militarum, they don't have too many options but the options that they have are very good so the number one kind of threat that i see actually on the table you know we're not including things like uh, bane blades variants because i I can't, I don't think I've ever seen somebody run it. Uh, maybe I'm just lucky or unlucky. But Demolisher Cannons um, on tank commanders, um, you know, they'll be hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. And, you know, if they're in grinding advance kind of movement, they can shoot twice. And using a Hail of Fire stratagem, they can auto do max shots versus vehicles for two CP. So that means, you know, they're doing 12 shots on threes, we're rolling ones, and their strength 10 and D6 damage and minus three AP. So this is pretty scary for Telemons to face. Um, Manticore's strength 10 and flat three. Um, you know, again, you don't get your Grim Responsibility value. Um, so that can be pretty scary. And also kind of Manticore's with Hunter Killer Missiles because they're flat six damage. Although they only get one. Within Chaos, I think the, the scariest things are Decimators with the um, Soul Burner Petards because they just shoot mortal wounds and if they have um, the correct buffing kind of combos in that army, that can do a shocking amount of mortal wounds to your Talamon. Um, kind of Chaos usually have a lot of Psychers, so Psychic wounds, you know, converting it to mortal wounds. And then you have your big kind of melee threats like Bloodthirsters, Greater Demons or Primarchs um, will be threatening towards your, your Talamon. Within Admech, they actually have quite a lot of scary shooting. So Castle and Robots, you know, Mars variants with the Dacobots, and they make them shoot twice. Um, you know, that can that can quite easily pick up a Telemon if they have a few of those robots. Um, the Energy Drune Crawlers are again strength 10, so you don't get your Grim Responsibility value. They're doing minimum, minimum 3 damage on D6. I think Shooty Priests can also do a surprising amount of, um, of damage as well if they use the Stratagem to get uh, AP on their shots. Um, Catafront Breacher Spam, if you haven't seen that, uh, can be frightening to Telemons because although it's not it's not very high strength, the damage goes to D6 um, versus vehicles, and they will have they will have an incredible amount of shots, um, and you'll you just you will just go down um, to that. Iron Strider Spam with stratagems, I think, could also be scary, especially if they take the last cannons. But you tend to see the auto cannon variety, but you know, even the auto cannon variety, you're now in the in the realm of weight of dice kind of territory. Harlequins and Eldari. Um, within Harlequins, Haywire is by far the scariest thing uh, for a Talamon to face. If they've got two units of five, um, your Talamon is usually... It, it's kind of usually dead, depending on, you know, whether you've got a Vexilla, whether you've turned off rerolls, etc. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty swingy, but uh, a five-man bike unit will do about eight-ish uh eight-ish wounds to a telemon by itself um if you're facing eldari you know demon guide is obviously very bad in terms of your survivability um now you can turn off the rerolls, but you know in the later turns if you're running out of cp um this can get pretty scary uh and links and d cannons because you know links have i think six shots at strength nine and flat three that's pretty nasty, um, and D cannons are always pretty nasty because they're strength ten and they're high damage as well. In terms of knights, I think almost every knight um, is a well, uh, and when I say knight, I mean not the armager class, but the kind of the bigger knights are all a threat to Salamons because they usually have at least you know the chain sword, or not the chain sword, the reaper, you know the big sword with flat six damage, or they've got the gauntlet, or they've got some you know maybe. Some of the Forge World Knights have even nastier kind of close combat weapons. 
Um, and because of their movement characteristic, I, I still think they're more likely to make a charge uh, onto you than you are onto them. And obviously, if you do get to swing on them, you will do massive damage to, to knights. Um, so, you know, you can mitigate kind of them charging you with Tanglefoot sometimes, but I think it's still more likely than not that they are going to get a charge off onto you just because they have a much higher movement characteristic than you do. Um, and then we come to Orcs and Tal, um, Fusion Commanders in bonus damage range. Um, you know, again, it's the bonus damage that makes them kind of threatening. Otherwise, you can usually just kind of shrug it off. And Relic Iron Cannons overcharged are actually pretty scary because, again, they're going to be doing max shots at... I uh, can't remember what the strength is, but I think it's like 9. And that's flat 3 plus D3 damage. So, again, you know, the bonus damage is what makes it threatening to a Talamon. And within Orcs, I couldn't think of many things that are that threatening to a Talamon. But a custom stomper with a lift to drop a gun is is actually pretty is pretty threatening because they don't roll against your toughness and there's nothing you can really do about that. They're just trying to beat your toughness on 3d6. And you have to remember 3d6 will give you an average of 10.5. So um, it's pretty likely that that the shots all, all the hits will all wound you kind of. So one of my closing thoughts on Talamons are that they're kind of they're insanely, insanely durable for their points cost. Uh, and it's probably to the point that I think it's probably bad for the game. But I think there are also a lot of units in the game that are bad for the game and they're just not in the Custodes army. So, you know, if you find that you're struggling um, with your Custodes, you know, consider putting a Talamon or two into your list just because it makes you so much more durable um, at 2,000 points. So especially, yeah, so especially if you buff up this unit with a Vex to make it minus one to hit, you use Grim Responsibility for minus one strength, and you've got your built-in minus one damage and feel no pain on a toughness eight to up four up chassis, um, and you can turn off all the rerolls. This will live a very, very long time. Um, the other kind of note that I want to touch on is I, I personally think Telemon should be moving up the field onto objectives as soon as possible to make themselves threatening um, to your opponent army. Because the second half of your threat is not so much the shooting, you know, you get some good guns onto a Telemon but it's kind of an expensive chassis to put a gun on. Um, but if you can shoot and punch, because you'll get five attacks with just one case, this, you know, we're, we're ignoring Eternal Penitent here. You know, now your output on your Telemon goes way up compared to, to shooting only, um, because the fists just do so much damage if you can get them into the right target. Um, and I think the way to make them deal with your Telemon is to push them aggressively up the board onto primary objectives. Um, or push them into the opponent army where you could theoretically charge something super super threatening or is very worthwhile for you to punch into combat. So every once in a while I'll see some people kind of take Telemons for backfield shooting and I think that's kind of a waste of the unit. You know, there are some arguments to be made for efficiency of, you know, a double Elastis Telemon just shooting Dakar at the back and being very, very hard to kill. Um, but that gives your opponent um, a kind of an easy option to just completely ignore that Telemon and leave that shooting all game um, because it's not it's not a, it's not a very good target for them to shoot it's kind of a waste of their shooting because if you think about the shots that are good against Telemon they're kind of the same shots that are good against you know your Venatari your bikes your Sagittarium etc because it's all you know you want high strength you want high damage you want high AP so or you want at least AP2 um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I land on on that you know backfield versus moving up aggressively on the board and leading on from that point is i don't think telemons need to be kind of hidden in deployment um so i think it's much more important to hide the rest of your army behind terrain because in in deployment you usually only get a, a certain amount of terrain and as a result of you know where the deployment lines are and where the terrain is there's only a certain amount of real estate within your deployment zone that you can not be shot on turn one and I think you shouldn't be wasting that space on your Telemon. I think you should probably be using that space to hide the rest of your army, um, especially if you can get the Vex in uh, in a place to cover the you know the Telemon so that he can benefit from minus one. Um, so this is kind of twofold. So this allows you to not use valuable deployment real estate for your Telemon, and it also means that because you're kind of not behind terrain, it's going to allow you to get to objectives uh, much faster because you don't need to like move sideways before moving forward. So as a result, you can kind of just deploy your Telemons on the line uh, very often, and it's it's not going to be that bad. So, And the reason why I say it's not going to be that bad is that most lists don't really have enough guns 
to to super threaten your Telamon um, in in one turn, especially if you have two of them. So anyway, uh, kind of shorter video for me today, but I hope that was useful, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much.